Welcome to the second part of the solutions and how to separate mixtures video. Uh, we're now going to look at fractional distillation, crystallization and filtration. So let's skip over the first two slides and get to those. Right, okay, um, here's fractional distillation. Uh, it does look a little bit like um, distillation, unsurprisingly. Um, but there's a key difference. So we have a heat source down here, which is the same. We have a condenser here, which is the same, with the water coming in at the bottom and going out at the top. And we have the distillate dripping off here. The key difference is this piece of kit here. This is called a fractionating column. And we would use uh, fractional distillation when separating mixtures with more than two components more than two liquid components or when the boiling points of the liquid components are quite close Now if we didn't have this fractionating column in here and the boiling points of two components down here are very similar. Let's say for example you've got a liquid which has a boiling point of 80 degrees and a liquid which has a boiling point of 85. Now they're both going to evaporate at very similar temperatures. So both liquids will evaporate off and if we imagine this isn't here and we've just got the normal distillation, um, both will hit the thermometer around about the same temperature. They'll give a reading on the thermometer. Now we're dealing with between 80 and 85, so something around about there. And both will move down the condenser that was here, uh, turn from a gas into a liquid, condense, and then drip off here. So we'd actually end up with a mixture of liquids in our distillate. What the fractionating column does is it stops that happening. It stops two liquids evaporating and reaching the thermometer as gases at the same point if they have different boiling points. So if the two have evaporated at roughly the same point, the component with the lower boiling point will make its way through this column. Now this column is a long tube of glass with lots of glass shelving in the middle. And we said we had a liquid, one liquid we had, let's say liquid A, which has a boiling point of 80, and then liquid B, which has the boiling point of 85. And we said they evaporated at a very similar point. And so we've got the two of them travelling up here. And the one with the higher boiling point will eventually condense back down. And the one with the lower boiling point will stay as a gas and will eventually make its way up here to the thermometer. It will give a reading of 80 degrees Celsius. The gas will travel down this tube, will suddenly hit the very cold condenser, and that will turn into a liquid. And when all of liquid A, component A, has evaporated, condensed and been collected, there will be a pause in the liquid dropping out here. And you will carry on heating, or one would carry on heating the mixture, and nothing would be coming out. And all of a sudden, the thermometer would go up from 80 to 85, and a second liquid would start to appear. And at that point it would be really important when doing this practically to use then a different container, an empty container, otherwise you're just creating a mixture. So it's that fractionating column which stops liquids of a similar boiling point evaporating off together, condensing together and being collected together. So it ensures the fractionating column ensures a pure product is collected. And again I've talked quite a lot without writing very much so you might want to watch this twice and make notes over this diagram for the various ins and outs of fractional distillation. Next up we've got crystallization I think. Oh no we haven't, it's filtration. Um, so. Filtration is used to separate mixtures which are a liquid 
and an insoluble solid. So in other words, a solid which has not dissolved in the liquid. So a useful example is a mixture of sand and water. We all know, to, we all know when, when we having gone to the beach for years and years that the sand on the beach does not dissolve in the water. We know this because otherwise there'd be no sand at the beach. It would have all formed a solution. So if we take a mixture of sand and water and pour it into a funnel, which is lined with a piece of filter paper, we pour it in and the filter paper collects the sand, which we call the residue, Okay, and the water drips through and that's known as the filtrate. Now, if you decided to take a liquid and a soluble solid, like a mixture of water and salt, and the salt dissolves in the liquid, so you can't see it, and you pour that in there, the filter paper would not catch the soluble solid. It would just run straight through with the liquid. So the filtrate would contain your water and your salt solution. So you cannot use filtration for separating a liquid and a soluble solid. It must be a liquid and an insoluble solid. And the next slide we are going to cover crystallization. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you what crystallization is. And what I've done is I've used a diagram that I've pilfered off the internet, and only in the last stages are we looking at crystallization. So I thought it'd be nice to actually talk through what's going on in the stages before before I get to crystallization. So what we've got here is a beaker, and it contains a solution. And what we've got in that solution, we've got a solid which has dissolved, a solute, in other, in other words, a solute which is dissolved, and we've got an insoluble impurity. So this might be a mixture of water, salt, which is dissolved, and sand. And let's imagine we're trying to extract the salt from this mixture. So the first thing we do is we filter off the sand. And we filter off the sand because that is insoluble. And so we're left with, and let's see if I can now use my, I'm, actually I'm just going to put a line through it. So we've taken out the sand. So at this point over here, we've just got water and salt. And we're trying to collect the salt. So what we do, and this process is called crystallization. This is what we've got. Okay, so the first step uh, we do is we warm the solution. And what that does is it allows some of the solvent to evaporate, the liquid to evaporate. Now, we're not evaporating it to dryness, we're just evaporating some of the solvent and what forms is a saturated solution. And what you start to see around the sides of the evaporating basin are crystals starting to form. And when the crystals are starting to form, you know you've got a saturated solution, and that's known as the crystallization point. And what you then do is you allow the evaporating dish to cool a little bit and when it's cold enough to pick up or even pick it up with some tongs you transfer it to a petri dish, an evaporating basin which has got a very large surface area and what that does it allows any remaining solvent to evaporate off naturally and crystals formed and you can collect those crystals Okay and you can dry the crystals, okay, collect and dry the crystals. Because uh, there might still be a little bit of water left on the surface, so you might dry it between 
a bit of paper towel. Okay, and that's what's known as crystallization. So crystallization is used to separate a solid, and in particular a soluble solid, which is dissolved in a liquid. So the solution is warmed to remove some of the solvent. When it gets to crystallization point, in other words, when crystals start to appear, you know you've got a saturated solution and you pour this liquid into an evaporating basin and allow the remaining solvent to evaporate and crystals to form. Now you might think, why do we not just heat the fury out of this mixture and allow all the um, solvent to evaporate really quickly? And that's a very good question. Uh, but we've got to be very careful with our mixture because we might have crystals which actually thermally decompose, which might break down when they're exposed to extreme heat. So we don't want to heat these uh, too strongly just in case our crystals thermally decompose and so we're left with nothing. Okay, um, you might be thinking, ah, oh, let's move on to chromatography. And... Chromatography is such a big topic that we're going to use a separate video for that. Um, it's frequently asked on IGCSE papers and I'm going to make a new video for chromatography. And that concludes our video on how to separate mixtures.